Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be putting a new seat base into the Tracker Grizzly to give me a much more comfortable driving position. Well, I figured out where I want to put the seat. It's only 48 inches wide, so 16, 17 foot Grizzlies, you have a little bit more wiggle room here. But I need to have enough space that the back of the seat doesn't continuously hit this track and that I'm able to get to this tiller. I don't have it set back at all and it's pretty far forward into the cockpit. So. Now I know my position, I'm just taking a sharpie. I just need to hold this thing as steady as I possibly can and mark where these holes are gonna have to be drilled. Now that I have my sharpie markers, I just want to make sure that everything lines up. That's flat. That's flat and I'm sure this one is going to be as well, yep. And then I already checked the distance across from one another, and they're just about identical. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line, and that way I know where I need to put my center hole for the seat mount itself. And then I can start drilling a base in. Right there's my mark. So while I'm working on drilling all those holes out and everything, I want to go ahead and put some paint on here and let it dry. I'm not really concerned as much about matching as I am about just putting a little bit of matte paint so it doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. So what we start off with is just Rust-Oleum Khaki. Nice and simple paint color. And then I'll go over the top of green with a little bit of foliage to make it blend in just a little bit with the boat. But this will be my base coat and I'm not going to prime this. Just gonna let this sit for probably 20 minutes, let it dry up a little bit, then I'll add the foliage and go ahead and put some more colors on. So I just wanna start with some pilot holes for the center here. And for all these, I'm gonna start with a 1 8 inch bit, and then I'll step it up a little bit more for this one. That way I can get my hole saw ready. And then I'll have to figure out what I need for quarter inch bits on these six on the outside. But we're just gonna begin here, I'm gonna take it nice and slow. I want to make sure everything's as centered as possible. All right, there's one done. With those done, I'm going to move up to a bit of a larger bit for the center hole, and I'll go ahead and knock that one out first for tackling these other six. With all the holes drilled, the only thing I'm concerned about is if there's a cross member somewhere in this area. I don't really know, um, but I want to drill and find out regardless. These holes are already drilled, so um, that's just going to be part of it. But uh, this drill is a little bit small as far as a pole saw goes, but. We're gonna go for it. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Well, that's definitely going to be an issue. Um, but the way I see it is the hole's already drilled and I'm not about to make another two and a half inch hole in the boat. I'm a little worried about how important that cross member is. Fortunately, I think it's mainly for this deck right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill it. I'm not gonna recommend you do so if you find a cross member, but this is what I'm gonna do for my application. And unfortunately, I don't even know if I moved it over here if it would made much difference only because then I wouldn't have enough room for the tiller handle. So I'm going to continue to work on this, go ahead and drill it out and um, if there is a problem I'll find a way to remedy that in the future. Well I finally got this drilled and first and foremost I don't need it in the comments. I'm aware it is not a good idea to 
drill into a structural part of the boat. But this is my boat. I'm going to do what I want. This still has plenty of strength in it. It's only for this back deck. It's not bracing the back or anything, so I'm not all that concerned. With well, that being said, let's go back to go ahead and painting the next portion of the seat base, and then we'll come back and finish drilling these holes, and all this just has foam underneath. Now, where my installation is differing from a lot of people is generally when people put a seat base into aluminum, they're just gonna use sheet metal screws. I have to think, you have like one thread that's actually in the aluminum and the rest is empty space. So you have very little holding power. I wish I knew about these sooner, but I'm gonna be using what's called a rivet nut. And now since if you've, you're familiar with pop rivets, it's basically the same concept, except threaded on the inside so you can put bolts in. So that way I have like eight threads in contact and a way larger surface area. So it's gonna be much, much stronger than half a thread or something like that in contact with very thin aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes, get these rivet nuts in. This is why I gotta be so careful when I was measuring everything out and I could put bolts in. So if I ever have to remove the steet in the future, it's gonna be much easier to do and I don't have to worry about stripping the aluminum when reinstalling the seat base. That fits in pretty well. Now time to set it. All I'm going to do is, and I bought this at Harbor Freight. I already got one set up on there. You just screw on the insert with these mandrels wide, place it in, try to be as even as possible. And that should have it set. Now I just unscrew it. And that isn't going to spin. It's not going to move. That is really well set in place. And it's going to be a super strong bond for many years to come. All right, this side is green slash khaki. The other's the opposite. So I'm just going to use this leaf Make a pretty simple and basic pattern here. Nothing too crazy. Yep, something like that will do. I'm gonna let that dry for a couple minutes. Again, not really going for matching, just kind of make it matte so it doesn't stand out too much. Well, it seats in place and while it doesn't line up perfectly, it lines up well enough essentially it'll I'll get all the screws in i'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of sealant around this larger hole these crimps are nearly watertight so i'm not going to bother with that today but just around this edge yep now i can feel the suction a little bit better I want to put these screws in by hand to start off with. That way I can keep them pretty loose. Start with this corner right here. And all I'm using is quarter by 20 inch uh, stainless steel bolts. And these are just three quarters of an inch. That's gonna be plenty for this application. And that, is not going anywhere. That is gonna be secure, super strong bond on all sides. Maybe a tiny bit of a gap on this edge, but very, very minimal. Really happy with the way this turned out. Now to put the seat in and make sure that I got plenty of room to move around. Well, the seat position is comfortable enough. Got access to my switch panel right here, so I can just reach down and get to it quickly if need be. Tiller control as far as just keeping the boat steady, going straight line, perfect positioning for my arm, rests nicely against the chair, and I don't have it swanned off behind me. A little bit of a push to go all the way to the left, but that's kind of be expected. This tiller handle can't be adjusted, so something you just gotta live with with the Tatsu in particular. On the other hand, 
Coming all the way back here, I do have to turn the seat a little bit as I'm making a full right turn with the engine, but I'm able to do so now and sit here comfortably, which ought to be very helpful. Not only that, but I'm sitting a little bit farther forward than I was, so that might help with the weight distribution just a tiny bit. It won't hurt anything by any means, but overall, I am pretty happy with it. I'm glad I did it. The seat base is strong as it can be, and with those rivet nuts in there, if I ever need to access beneath it, you can see just how quickly and easily I'm gonna be able to get this base seat off, and I can check for foam being wet or anything of that nature. I'm gonna leave the tools and parts I used in the description, just in case you wanna tackle this for yourself and you'll be able to see what I used here today. That rivet nut tool is phenomenal and I'm really happy I did purchase one. It was $50, well worth the money and I think I'll be able to use it on quite a few future projects that I wanna get much stronger bonds with rather than just sheet metal screws. But guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed this seat install and look forward to seeing the tracker out in the water come this spring, Please make sure to share, like, subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching.